How's it hang loose? Welcome to Mongoose Max Hawaii. Thank you for new subscribers. You're most welcome. And all my subscribers, I wish I could thank each and every one of you. And you might have noticed my newspaper Hawaii, where I kind of do a jovial take on the news so the news isn't so heavy. And it was kind of convenient for me to tell you the truth because the news happens every day and I needed some consistency and skill development so I'll try to pass those along for people that are new. People that veteran, you know, you know this stuff. Yes. So some of my, my channels breaking down to some of these series. One is Newspaper Hawaii, one is Cryptocurrency. Thank you for the support in Cryptocurrency. It's called Crypto Corner, where I look at some of the crypto stuff. That being said, there's other little categories. This one being Spook 101. This category is basically a bucket of whatever in the paranormal. I'm going to uh, focus on that. And so, I live in a house. I'm a caretaker for my mom. Well, what do they call it? Home caregiver thing. I did that for my dad before he passed in the house um, for about five years, something like that. And everything's pretty kosher, except then my teaching thing didn't go. Why am I giving you this background? Well, because partially, I would have done Supernatural probably anyways. It's very popular and such like that. But in this instance, there's a real life situation. And I wonder if there's connections. I'm actually at this point kind of a little convinced that there are. Uh, it involves another person. Um, now I'm going to be delicate about this. Uh, she's the sister of my eldest of uh, three sisters, the eldest one. Now this one's a runaway and she's been, she ran away from parental discipline. She stays up there. She's been in a lot of stuff and I shouldn't say background or her name and it really sort of isn't about her. It, it isn't, but her case is the base of, I think what might be uh, evil spirit type of stuff. Now, <coughs> that being said, um, I believe she has a narcissistic, malignant, narcissistic personality disorder. She goes undiagnosed, she's refusal, she's really hell. So in those type of personality disorders, you know, they don't, one person they'll target as a, a scapegoat. Nothing to do with anything. I didn't wrong her, but she needs the target person, targeted individual. Now, that being said, um, I had this theory that I was developing that this NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder, resembles demon possession. And I kept hinting at my channels. If you notice in my channel, uh, I would basically call her the witch. Now, that's not meant so much as an insult as it is a short description of what it feels like spiritually. Yeah. So if I get into some religion, morality, right and wrong, evil sin, disobedience, heaven, hell, God, angels, devils. If I start getting into that, that's because I grew up Roman Catholic. And this might be where it applies. So this is probably going to be a little lengthy, but I wanted to show you some of these books I told I, I'd say, I don't do, do I don't know which, and this is what I'm referring to. Notice that this is a little bit more somber, not so joking. Although, you know, maybe I'll make a joke, but I'm serious with this topic. This is for real serious. This here is something that was given to me by my friend who has passed away last February 2020. You know, this was the love of my life, you know. The love of my heart big time and so much love and I learned a lot and very 
spiritual person as well. And I've talked to her on, you know, when I'm in Hawaii, she's in Texas, I've talked to her every day. And now that she's gone, I also had the need to reevaluate because there's a gap, there's this, I used to talk to this person. So, and the situation at the house is very troublesome. So, what happens is, I have to just basically find, I don't know, I just picked up an extra therapist just to talk to on the phone because the situation is so bad. It's like, I want her out of the house, she wants me out of the house. I mean, it erupts into bits of rage that are, it's unbelievable. And I told her in some of these things, I was like, you know, go even, yeah, freaking witch, go worship the devil. And I'm saying this in hushed tones because she actually eavesdrops. She's eavesdropping my room, she eavesdrops over here. So it's an overall feeling of dread and uh, invasiveness as well. Like no one can live and be free and be themselves. And there's so much more. Okay. So like I said, it's not about that person. It's about this subject area. So is NPD similar to demon possession? And what is demon possession? So I went over and I took, you know, I took a look and I'll just say say it all because I hope not to be too talk story, but it shall be a hell of a talk story here. <clears throat> Might as well get into this one because I just thought of it. This here, okay, this was given to me by my friend who's passed. This is a St. Benedict medal. It's a really large one. And it's a whole video just to tell you what's on this. It's like one of the early exorcist uh, material from, I don't know how far back St. Benedict goes. But it's like, you know, go drink your own cup of poison, you dang uh, freaking dragon or serpent or something, you know. And it has like little letter initials. And people wear this for spiritual protection, for sure. And the amulet or um, religious token, I think they call it, is not idolatry. So I have to kind of talk about misconceptions about Catholicism here and there. But I'm not trying to probe Catholicism and evangelize you guys. I'm just saying what I know, what it says, and that was what the promise was on that. So I lost my train of thought where I was going with this. Okay. Um, okay, with that uh, protection. Okay. And, and, uh, all this uh, an old unfolds in my oh okay I know that was the old story back I think it was in the 70s and today's like 2020 so that's like freaking close to 50 no okay, around there like I'm not that old I think it was probably like 40 years ago maybe well, whatever the exorcist movie came out okay so now you got a date figure it out, do the math later. The Exorcist, the movie, had a big uh, premiere. There was a lot of hype before the movie was shown. So everyone was scared to see it. No one, my mom would love horror movies, but no one would go with her to this movie, but I would. And when I first saw the Exorcist movie, I was so scared to see the movie that when it was pee in the carpet and green pea soup, I actually laughed a little out loud in the theater because it was gross. It's like, this is it? But beforehand, my friend, who used to date my sister, um, I wanted to get tickets to this movie and we were riding our bicycles around Diamond Head Road. And I'm at the handlebars, regular bike, at a 10 speed. And, we'll, and the cars would go by. And the car went by. This is before they had bike lanes. The car went by and it went so close to my handlebars that it, I scared and it went off. Hit the gravel, went over the handlebars, stopped my fall with my hand, 
and ripped open the palm of my hand. And there's the scar to this date. A scar. It was like this. We tied a little string around, walked back home. The blood went down and went around the string. It looked like I was balancing my severed arm on my hand. People in cars would go by and go, oh, oh, I'm doing this. Didn't get stitches. So it left a pretty marked scar from the movie The Exorcist. Mm. That movie was based on a book. The book was written by someone who was a comedian writer, but he was hard time writing. So he decided to write a serious novel. He was influenced by an article he saw in a newspaper at the time when he was going to a college. And the article was about this possessed boy. This is what this book is about. They changed it to a girl to protect the story, the first people involved. Changed the name to protect the innocent. Well, you know, protect their privacy and all that. Okay, I'm gonna really try to pay attention to being fast. <clears throat> Later on, the priest involved, some of the priests involved, there's more than one. Uh, when they finally got down to the guts of let's get the person down and exercise them they started diaries so they had a diary from this one guy and this other priest and this different priest and um they were hidden and kept away like one was kept by blah 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 blah, blah. and a couple of these diaries resurfaced years and years later so this book is not that old of a book 1993 this guy getting hold of these journals and going out and interviewing as many of these people as possible trying to get collect together the best story in this truest like the real journalism as true as can be about this who's still anonymous in this book like Jane Doe Roland Doe and so we learn, I learned a little bit from that. It's still going on. That book was recommended by Father Malachi Martin, who I was learning some of the stuff from, watched a bunch of his lectures, the television, his interviews, and the Art Bell interviews of Malachi Martin. So I'm telling you my sources, a lot of this. Um, and a while back, I did do the thing about the Catholic Church and Vatican II, so... Before Vatican II, old school Roman Catholic in Latin. Vatican II, the stuff trickles out. You can say your mass in English. The priest can turn facing the congregation. Stuff's opening up, so it looks more like the mass, the Roman Catholic mass we have today. <clears throat> but one of the things they did was they sort of, well, we're not going to be so medieval. And they kind of discontinued the exorcism thing. It was like, oh, not that. We don't need that branch from the eight, you know, medieval times. And when that happened, exorcisms went up. Like, the request for them, the rate of them. So some of these priests, like Father Malachi Martin, were going out and kind of almost rogue doing exorcisms. Because they weren't just... The, if we're a Roman Catholic, you have to go to the bishop, they have to investigate first and see if it's psycho, like NPD, or not. And then their request is, re then the priest, the bishop, assigns a priest, because the bishop is the exorcist. They assign a priest to do the job. So it has the authority hierarchy, the apostolic part of the Roman Catholic Church. And the priest goes in there with somebody else in there, freaking do the dirty work. Now, does that sound scary? Well, for a lot of people, they'll just fluff it off. God don't exist. And that's fine. But if you believe that evil exists besides the heart of people being bad, if it exists, you might say, on its own. 
then you have to admit God exists. So this material is going to get um, flack from people who are prou atheist and proud in a sense. And there's many philosoph philosophy intellectuals in that. And I don't want to. I'm not out the banter with them. And I was like, "You win." I guess how can you prove God? Well, you could say that the devil exists. You have to say God exists. And then they got revenge. Okay, so what is all this? Okay. Okay, my goodness, Max. I am bored. What is this? What does that have to do with me? Well, most of the time my audio gets haunted a little bit. There's like some weird crap and it's more and more weird. And there's some weird things that have happened that I've n observed that I've never even related. Like the phantom music one. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> looking for it. Looking for to wake up. It's not half dreaming. I wake up. I'm looking around like it's come. I pinpointed it to a corner of the upper of my room. Very faint. It's like there's nothing there. It's like this music. It sounded like different times, different music. Sometimes it was old 1920s. Sometimes it was uh, band music, like swing music. Sometimes it sounded like people practicing. Like, and then it would stop at a note. Da -da 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 it's like if someone was in a practice room. I never to this day have I figured out what the hell that is. There's no other explanation. I, I, I don't know what it is. That's the explanation. Okay. Now I figured things like that. You know, this book. This is the uh, Hal Holzer, Holzer book. I saw this book in the bookstore. I just had to get it. Look how big this sucker is. I had this the longest time. <laughs> I looked through a lot of it and, oh, true encounters with the world beyond. And as you can see, it's a little bit dusty and dirty. And it has these incidences written out. And there's very few pictures. But it has just the, like, catalog of the Hal Holzer paranormal investigation stuff. I figured I'd bring this book out to put on the shelf here and as soon as I did I put it in a box to bring it over. I'm like, oh, first I couldn't find it in my room. This book, which used to be kind of like right there, was lost. I couldn't find this book. Now, there's explanations, because my room gets its upheaval, there's a lot of stuff in my room, moving back and forth, Texas, Montana, and Honolulu. My, my room is, it's like, a, I'm half hoarder, I guess, but this is my stuff, you can't throw it out, and, but it's, there's definitely piles rather than files. I couldn't find this book, finally found it, put it in the box, and there's like, there's like freaking ants. There was an invasion of an ant farm. I sprayed up those little ants on that. So it's okay now. It's just dirty. I kind of have a little pesticide, so I won't touch it much. Okay. So, this brings me to, well, I was going to say how the paranormal and demonology are basically kind of connected. Here goes. You've heard of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now, at first, I you know, I saw a documentary, and I think, oh yeah, they they told their story, and they told it in a way where it made me think that they're just playing the crowd, and it's kind of hyped up more than anything. Like they were just out for some money, you know? It's like, I'm, I need some money. It's like P.T. Barnum, like a lot of the ghost stuff nowadays, P.T. Barnum. 
It's like how spiritualism started in the 1800s. It's like right after the Civil War, there's a lot of people that had been killed, a lot of loss. And people moaned and bemoaned their loved ones and they wanted to still talk to their loved ones. And now I know that feeling directly. And in the held seances and uh, contacting the dead. And that movement became spiritualism. It's not, I don't like religion, so I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual rather than religious. It's not that at all. It's spiritualism is talking to the dead. Now, I'll be, <clears throat> I'll come clean and open and disclosure factor in this side for a reason. Distractions. Okay, back in the day, right out of college, right into college, right when the witch was born, which is an interesting timeline, I started to develop a drinking problem. And it ruined a USC career, you know, at college. In, in two years, that thing was destroyed. Drinking problem. It went from nothing to, that, to destruction in two years. That's when that one was born. And then that started. But I'm not co-relating just yet. <coughs> Damn. So, um, when I got back, it got worse. And then I resisted and basically drank for about 20 years more after about two years, uh, 20 more years. And I got clean and I got sober. Because the thing was about alcohol, not drugs. I did drugs, but it was about alcohol. And I did the thing that eventually people do, AA. Now this has nothing to do with AA per se, except I was able to, thank God, get sober using AA. If you have a problem with drinking, check it out. Or ask people, talk to people. I'm not promoting. But in that 12-step program, they have this higher power. You might have heard of this, higher power. And it's in the steps. Now, in the book, the actual book, basically, higher power is talking about God. And basically, that book is about like kind of conversion. It's really about going back to prayer and, and connection to God, a personal connection, okay? And the spirit and the power from that is, gets a healing effect over uh, addiction to alcohol and addiction to substances and narcotics anonymous, the, the witch. Now, the spiritual higher power is like I said, God or Holy Spirit, but it's there. So if it's not there, you have to deal with that somehow else. But in that effect from the 12 steps and the higher power gives another angle to what the hell with this stuff. I mentioned it because it's, it will come up again because of how this is held, handled now. Oh my gosh. I know. Like, subscribe, but look at this. This built in the in the in the tall stuff they'll say they don't want to be religious about church and organized religion. So they'll say, I'm spiritual, not religious. Good. Good. Good for you. Do what works for you. But that isn't the spiritualism of talking to the dead. That's different, but useful with this later. The warns to bring back the tangents before I'm getting distracted. The Roman Catholic Church and um, Lorraine Warren was Catholic. She was the psychic lady. 
and when they investigated the ghost haunted house stuff they were trying to determine whether it was demonic or not the investigation paranormal is like the church going out to figure out if it's demonic or if it's a psychological problem if the person's depressed maybe they have anxiety bipolar and I know some about psych too uh, the associative disassociative personality disorder which is the split personality oh this person oh that person oh, oh, oh. dissociative you're disassociating from yourself personality <sighs> this goes on so there, I call it deep psych for fun so there's deep psych if it's not that then what do you have the body it's like a leftover so if you know it's not that then you have to deal with it and deal with it with this on a spiritual side and you're getting distracted so these paranormal investigations the ghost hunts really spring from what proving it whether it's demonic or not and if you look at some of the ghost hunts now they're out there going Ooh, it might be demonic okay let me this book I found in my room I found it it's full of ants it's an infestation. Let me just go over the basic levels. Okay, I got this down here in a couple days. I know, this is long. But this is like research stuff, okay? Right now. So I'm letting you know the direct, serious why and how and the research background. So, what we have with demonic. Okay, say God exists, say the devil exists, say this power can do what it does. There's levels. The first level is harassment. You can come and like, you know, make you, get you angry. That's what it wants to do. That's what they say. It wants to get you angry because if your aura, your spiritual being is angry, then you will have to, well, get angry and then when you get angry then it's like it feeds off the anger let me start and stop excuse me okay this camera only goes half an hour at a time so now I know this is over half an hour my apologies but it's worth it to put all of this in one spot as you can see why I'm hesitating for a couple of reasons one I want to keep the witch as anonymous as possible something of a valuable tool which is spiritual that I get from 12 steps of AA I can't see the full name because I don't want to use their name <laughs> Now, the one thing important about the 12-step thing is that it tries to make a spiritual connection and then you revive a power. It means, power with a capital P means a God power. So basically, a spirit, right? For Catholics, I, hey, if it's your understanding, somehow like, go for it, right? But taking up like that and the distraction going on. <clears throat> and this chair is very creaky. And I thought for a second I might have not have pushed the go button. So harassment. If these spiritual things harass you and you get angry, then your aura turns and it feeds off that spiritual energy that you have and sucks your energy dry and you've heard of the things that sucks batteries dry and things like that it feeds off energy it needs to feed the second is obsession the next level up obsession is um it starts taking over your life and it starts entering the import in point in the input point your mind so emotions, it wants to attack that. Your mind, it wants to attack that. And so um, basically what's going on there is your attention 
it constantly tries to get your attention. So you wind up, it's bugging you. You're thinking about it all the time. It gets to be the obsession. Now when it has this entry point, it's got emotion, got mental, and starts going for oppression. Because now it's got hooked on. It tries to actually get you down where it's draining your energy and you're feeling down. Oppression is constantly there. Oppression is a dangerous level of spiritual attack. Now we're looking at spiritual as in good and bad. And when it gets to oppression, the bad is starting to tip over. And that's the tipping point where it can overpower you. That's the possession. It owns you like a possession. And notice my little dog skull, cat skull, cat skull, dog skull, little doggies, yes. Little hounds of hell, the puppies are now. And anything symbolic. They leave. <laughs> not ridiculous that's a coincidence but good spirit bad spirit and the dichotomy and the back and forth toiling it's like in a person they can make good choice bad choice morality and sometimes there's a, a tug of war that's the temptation should I shouldn't I and that comes under morality so you get things like church talking about it and stuff like that too um, so, what, where am I going with this? Okay. To understand, see, you get distracted and everything. Um, one understanding is that, uh, I'm going to go for the kind of Roman Catholic understanding. It's in the Roman Catholic rite of exorcism. It's the big exorcism. And basically, if you pray to God, all the angels and saints, Mother Mary, Every, everyone in the kit and caboodle that is heaven connected. God surrounded by all that's stuck onto God because of heaven and God's kingdom and God's will. If you're calling on all of that, that is a big prayer to God. And basically, if you're under demon uh, oppression, you can pray to God. And it could just, that's all there is. And if you pray to God, demons will flee. So I don't have a Bible on me, but there's passages along that ilk. <sighs> Roland Doe. He was a young kid, and he was kind of a bratty, pesky kid. He grew up to be, he's probably like an 80, if he's still alive, he's like an 80-something-year-old man, had a successful life, marriage, family, great career and he's still anonymous all right whoever he is we don't know but when he was a boy like any typical boy he can be pretty bratty and there's an in was that for real you might find out there's an ant crawling see the ant from the infestation infestation so think of it the same way it infests all around in your life the next step it starts to grab your mind Starts to harass you, get your feelings. A mind starts to get your. Now, the last um, to conclude with the levels. The last one is integration. A person possessed doesn't want to be overcome, so they're still fighting. They still believe in God, and they want to be free of the evil, so they're fighting. So if you can get to them, it the the minor possession, the minor deliverance and deliverance ones, those are minor exorcism. The major exorcism is the right, the Roman right, you know. The power of Christ compels you. You see it in the exorcist movie. The power of Christ compels you with Max von Sydow, God rest his soul. Max von Sydow compels you, but the power of Christ compels you. That's depicting the, the Roman right, the major exorcism major uh, 
the need to write an exorcism. This is an encyclopedia for Roman Catholic stuff, and um, this one has basically what is the Trinity, what is the Holy Spirit. There's one of these, these are like right from the Vatican. One of these has uh, the devil and hierarchy stuff. And I won't be able to get a chance to read, otherwise this would be too extraordinarily long. The other material source, which is to say I'm going over sources, is the Roman Catholic, uh, the Catechism. The Catechism is basically what the Church teaches. So this is, the Church teaches this. The devil influence in our lives comes from the fall, from the Adam and Eve, fall from grace and all that. Well, the devil was angel, but he had a fall too. It's sort of like, he could fall too, but God gave us free will. But with the devil, this fall of the angels, 391, behind the disobedient choice of our first parents, Adam and Eve, lurks a seductive voice opposed to God, blah, blah, blah. The scripture speaks of sins of these angels. The fall consists of free choice of these created spirits who radically, irrevocably rejected God. So, because they had, they weren't the same as humans, when they rejected God, that's basically unforgivable. The mercy of God, because we make mistakes, we're humans, we're stupid, we're the, we have flaws. Original sin is just a weakness, that's all. It's not guilty, it's a weakness to sin. These ones didn't have that. The power of Satan is nonetheless not infinite, because they were a creature they were a creative being, but since they have pure spirit, they're still a creature. Pure spirit, but a creature. So basically, what you got is, if you were in struggle with a devil, any devil is connected to the hierarchy. So any devil could go right to Satan. So if you're connected to any of that, I mean, it means that it is more powerful than you. It is pure spirit. You cannot battle it with anything else with God's spirit stuff. And it's definitely going to outsmart you, outthink you, and out just, just destroy you. And it's going to lie to you. And it's going to trick everybody around you. That's why I think some of these, uh, well, demon possession things, they look like they're hoaxes, like this one. It looks kind of like a hoax. Like maybe the kid was just making it all up. When you look closer, it's so borderline you can't tell. The closer you look, the more it's like that. The last level, integration, is described by Father Malachi Martin as perfect possession. That's when the possessed person stops struggling and gives in. Their will is now Satan's will. You know, in prayer, our Father, thy will is that we were praying for God's will to be part of our lives. Thy will be done. Now that's transferred over to Satan and Satan's will. And the person voluntarily does that. They gave in. And then their life looks peachy, peachy keen, much like the Faust tale. And I got that play too, it's a play. That's a story, but it's meant to depict. It's like you give in and then it's too late because the person possessed was not going to participate in ousting any of the bad. So there it is. And when I say in my So sorry for the creaky chair and distractions. Vini Sancti Spiritus. Vini Sancti Spiritus. Vini Sancti Spiritus. That means come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Three times is a charm. Three times is like the Trinity. It's power. Come Holy Spirit. That's an easy prayer. 
and it's in Latin. Latin ones are stronger. So there is the beginning of, I guess, I don't know. I guess we're delving into demonology. I'm so sorry about the length of these. And there it is. So, may God bless you and protect you, especially in these times. And we'll get into this and maybe not so long, not so heavy on the, I'm just telling you my sources, you know, and I'm going to be open and honest because I'm a science guy and science makes it tougher to believe, but they're not opposed. You can be as intelligent and as inquisitive as you want to. Matter of fact, the Roman Catholic Church says, do that. Look into it. Investigate it. Use all your powers of thinking and rationalizing. Be a skeptic. Be a cynic. Apply all that. Because if faith is real, it will prevail. Anyhow, hang loose. Leave a comment if you like. Wake up.